There is an abundance of horrible people, alive and well, and living in legal puke. It was I who discovered the hollows in which these small statured pugnacious individuals thrive. I, too, have received, by use of quartz crystals and a string, from, so to speak, on high, their origin. What's wrong? No one received word from wherever a wide load of people cropped up? Are we not all equally entitled to determine the beginnings of people we don't personally know? My origins matter, as does theirs and everyone else's. Open questions permeate the air. Are people me, for example, driven by external forces? Prophecy, if you will. Preordination, if you will. And that's plenty of bargaining for now. For simplicity, I mail ordered a pair of binoculars from the internet and have been watching a hollow on the side of an Appalachian mountain. One of them. Imagine how bizarre, freakish subcultures may exist. And if, if it was only possible to study, all these mean material mountains, but we all stand to learn, it's just phenomenal. According to scripture, the scripture that I received, most of these people got where they are by spontaneous generation. The tiny people living in Beagle Cube came into being, poof, like out of nowhere. But with, um, with physics nervously in mind, they came from somewhere too, much like you and me. If it's still worthwhile to compare people to one another, everyone came from somewhere. But it went down something like this. Just a few scant millennia ago, there lived this dog, the size of a brontosaurus. It was a very, very large beagle, trotting merrily mountain to mountain, bounding with the easily Yorkshire Terrier across an indoor outdoor carpet, stopping to drink from a mountain spring, unaware of the complex mind shafts and construction projects had filled with torrents of lawn chemicals, pesticides, and poisons, all pouring into that little mountain spring. The gargantuan beagle was made ill. It puked his bounding furry wings and guts up. And with no forces in Pittsburgh great enough to clean up this lake of dog vomit, it lay there, at once dormant and active, crusting and liquefacting, dying here living there. The pool was both absorbing the ground and resisting complete surrender to the mountain. It was a life force, however it may be looked at. I have been watching the hollow of Beagle Peak using my binoculars, and I feel obliged to report what is seen. Thank you for listening.